Solar systems form within a nebula, a vast swirling cloud of gas and dust floating in space. Most of a nebula is hydrogen and helium left over from the Big Bang. The remainder consists of heavier elements formed in stars or during the death throes of stars. Some of the heaviest elements formed in supernova explosions. The nebula consists of both volatile materials, which melt or vaporize at relatively low temperatures, and refractory materials, which generally melt or vaporize at relatively high temperatures. Various ices form when volatiles freeze, whereas rocky or metallic solids form when refractory materials solidify. A portion of a nebula that happens to become a little denser will exert a bit more gravitational pull on its surroundings and will start attracting in more gas and dust. As material falls inward, gravitational pull increases still more, and the once swirling cloud evolves into a rotating disk called an accretionary disk. As we can see in these photographs from the Hubble Space Telescope, a single large nebula can be a nursery for a large number of stars. Now, let's focus on what happened next in the case of our own solar system a bit over four and a half billion years ago. As time passed, matter continued to fall onto and become part of the accretionary disk. Much of this mass eventually moved to the center of the disk and built into a large ball called the protosun. The region of the disk that remained outside of the protosun could now be called a protoplanetary disk. Eventually, the mass of the protosun grew to be great enough that its interior became extremely dense and hot. When the temperature became high enough, nuclear fusion reactions began and the sun lit up, sending out intense radiation and solar wind into the space around it. The solar wind cleared the inner protoplanetary disk of most volatiles, leaving behind the refractory elements, which began to collect into rings. Within a ring, particles of dust and ice stuck together to form larger masses called planetesimals. Countless collisions of planetesimals eventually built larger bodies. A rare kind of meteorite, called a chondritic meteorite, may show us what one of these planetesimals looked like inside. It looks like clots of matter stuck together. As more time passed, one planetesimal got big enough so that it started to attract most of the matter in its orbit. Once the object became several hundred to a thousand kilometers in diameter, it could be called a protoplanet. 